So many people think that you're going to have to spend a lot of money to build a new setup from scratch with all new parts. In this video, I'm going to show a full gaming setup which includes windows, a monitor, peripherals, and a gaming PC, all for around $600. This will have all the tech that you need to start gaming at 1080p high to ultra settings in the latest games. This is Sugjeet from the Hardware Hub and let's get right into it. Let's start this off with the CPU. I decided to go with the AMD Ryzen 3 1200 for $60. This is an excellent budget CPU that can handle gaming and light video editing at 1080p. This CPU has 4 cores which might not seem like a lot but it should be enough for most games. It also comes clocked at 3.1GHz and is unlocked. In most cases these can hit upwards of 3.7GHz which is definitely a nice boost in performance especially considering that this is a lower end product. The Ryzen 3 1200 also has a Wraith Stealth Cooler in the box which isn't crazy good but it's good enough to keep temperatures low which is all that you need for a cooler. Altogether for 60 bucks, you're getting an amazing budget CPU. Now to house the CPU, I decided to go with the ASUS Prime B50M A slash CSM for $79. This is a micro ATX motherboard with 4 RAM slots, 6 SATA ports, and an M.2 slot. Having 6 SATA ports and the M.2 slot is definitely nice because it gives you a lot of options to expand your storage in the future. The 4 RAM slots also leave room for RAM upgrades in the future as well, which is nice. With AMD motherboards, it's important to choose a B-series chipset or above like this one because it enables overclocking for a CPU which is important if you want to maximize your CPU performance. There's not much more to say about this, it's a solid AM4 motherboard. Now for the RAM, I decided to throw in the Team T4 16GB set for $50. This is a decent kit that comes clocked at 3000MHz and is dual channel. The 16GB capacity is easily enough for 1080p gaming and it should allow for 1080p video editing as well. This kit should also allow for some decent multitasking as well, so if you like doing things such as having a lot of browser tabs open, this will be good for that as well. For $50, this easily does everything that a PC needs. Now for the storage, I went with a classic 1TB WD Blue hard drive for 40 bucks. I usually see this for around $45 to $50, so this is definitely a great price for this hard drive. In terms of specs, this spins at 720 RPM and has 64 MB of cache. This won't be beating any SSDs or anything, but it can definitely load things at a reasonable speed and is about as fast as most hard drives. So while this isn't anything fancy, it gets the job done, which is all you really want. Now for the graphics card, probably one of the most important parts of a gaming PC since it influences the gaming performance the most, I went with the GTX 1650 Super for $164. This is one of the latest NVIDIA GPUs and it's based on the Turing architecture. The 4GB of VRAM that this has isn't great, but it works for 1080p gaming which is what this card is aimed at. Besides that, this card has a nice silver cooler which will work great for overclocking and like all NVIDIA GPUs, with this GPU you get access to the software like GeForce Experience, which is definitely beneficial for a lot of people. Altogether, for $165 odd dollars, you're getting a reasonable package from Nvidia. Now to house all the components, I chose the Rosewell SRM01 for $30. As the price suggests, this case is targeted towards lower end budgets. However, despite the low price, you're getting a modern looking case with all the features that you need like a couple of drive bays, a couple of USB ports, and some cable routing holes. Now I'm not going to lie, this is not the greatest case out there, but it has all the features that you need to get this build done, and it doesn't look too bad either. Next up for the power supply, we have a 600 watt Thermaltake Smart Unit for $47. Thermaltake PSUs have shown some excellent bang for the buck recently, and this is an excellent example of that. This PSU is 80 plus white rated, which is decent, and it has two 8 pins, which will allow for decent GPU upgradability down the line. The 600 watt capacity is definitely overkill for the setup, but it allows you to upgrade your CPU and GPU to more power hungry ones down the line, which is definitely nice. So for just under 50 bucks, this covers all the things that you absolutely need for a PSU. Now for the operating system, we have Windows 10 Home N for $25. You're going to get Windows for this price on Microsoft SoftSwap, which I will link down below. I have bought from them several times using PayPal, and I've had no problems so far. Another option is to use unactivated Windows for free, but that doesn't give you all the features that Windows has, so I wouldn't recommend it. Also, in case you're wondering, the N indicates that this copy of Windows does not have the Windows Media Programs pre-installed. This is not an issue because you can go ahead and install them for free off of Microsoft's website, which I will link down below as well. 
As of right now, Windows is the ideal OS for gaming, so I'm sure most of you aren't surprised to see this for the setup. Now for the monitor, we have the Scepter E248W for $87. This is a great monitor that has a resolution of 1080p, which is what I'd recommend most budget gamers to play at. It also has a 75Hz refresh rate, which will make gameplay smoother and more responsive compared to a 60Hz display. This monitor also has built-in speakers, which is definitely a nice feature if you don't want to spend extra for dedicated speakers. For under $90, this is definitely an amazing value, especially considering it's brand new. Now last but not least, for the keyboard and mouse, we have the Logitech MK120 combo for $16. Now keyboards and mice are pretty subjective, so you can substitute this for something else if you want something more fancy, or if you have a keyboard and mouse already. Now I personally think it's more important to have a faster gaming PC than more expensive peripherals, which is why I went with this basic keyboard and mouse set. This is probably the easiest part of the setup to replace, so if you have to change it in a few months or a year, it's not going to be a big hassle at all. You know, after seeing all the parts for the setup, you're probably wondering, what kind of performance can you get out of this? Well, in most games, you can play them at high to ultra settings with around 60 FPS. Obviously, there's some games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which are harder to run, but at the settings that it does run it at, it gives you a very good experience, and I think that most people will be satisfied by the performance. Altogether, this setup has everything you need for a great 1080p gaming experience. Now before we end this video, I'd like to quickly mention I have links to everything in the description so check those out if you're interested. Also if you have any questions about this setup or PC building in general, please leave me a comment down below and I'll help you down there. But yeah guys, that's all for today. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you didn't like it, please dislike this video and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one.